Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to another probably useless test, but if you click that, you might be interested. Another full frame versus micro four thirds kind of shootout. Now, one of the areas where I've always kind of been like iffy on micro four thirds is probably just my own mental hang up is in portraits. I always feel like I wanted something that was either like a real shallow APS-C or something in a full frame, but clearly micro four thirds is capable for portraits. And I just want to see how close they really are. Now, Portraits, I understand, can be shot at like F8 or whatever in a studio. A lot of professionals, high-end photographers do that. But I'm talking like, for what I do, senior portraits, that kind of stuff out in a field. You might want to kind of get that glowy background. If you're into that, I want to test that out. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a couple of equivalents and equals and compare them to each other. Now, what I'm filming you on right now, what I have in my hand is a Canon R8. And on the Canon R8, a typical or nice portrait lens would be this 85 millimeter F2 right here. Now, obviously there's L glass as well, but I feel like this is kind of like the go-to choice for portraits if you're kind of starting out in the RF system. And I want to take a look at this. We'll talk about why I have the RF system or RF camera in my hands in another video. But for this video, we'll leave it alone. And what we're going to do on Micro Four Thirds is test the equivalent of that or somewhat close to the equivalent of that, which is the 45 millimeter F1.8, which you see right here. Now, of course, there's 45 millimeter 1.2, the, the uh, Leica, or um, Leica, the Zuiko Pro Lens. There's also the 42.5 millimeter 1.2 Noctocron. I didn't pick those up. Those are like $1,000 lenses. I stuck with something like this I happen to have, which is cheaper, and we're gonna test that out. And then the other option is kind of going towards an equivalent lens focal length uh, on Micro Four Thirds, which is this right here, the 75 millimeter 1.8, which of course is 150 millimeter equivalent with the crop. And so I wanna take a look at all three of those. And when we do that, I happen to have my buddy with me, my buddy Ryan, who you guys have seen in prior videos. He's going to be, uh, he's gonna be my portrait subject. Dude, can you, can you be my portrait subject? He's gonna be a it. portrait subject. Paint me like one of your ladies, Jack. Jack. One of your models. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna throw, um, I'm gonna do two types of shots. We're gonna do kind of like a, a closer shot, maybe like chest up, and we're gonna do a full body, because um, it's kind of so you get some of the depth of field differences of full frame versus micro four thirds. And I'll just leave them in standard portrait mode that comes in the camera so you can see the out of camera color differences as well. Auto white balance, I'll shoot at base ISO. The shallowest, uh, most wide open the lens can be and let the shutter speed be what it is. All right, so let's do that. You guys will see me swap back and forth. Obviously as I'm shooting on the Canon, I'll be filming on the Olympus and then vice versa. So uh, let's start, since I am on the Canon, let's start with the Olympus. All right, for the first thing, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put Ryan you guys see back here this little stairs thing? I'm gonna frame it up so that that stairs thing's in the background. You have a point of reference for kind of depth of field and fall off. And I'm gonna start with the 75 millimeter, the longest one, it's 150 millimeter equivalent on the Olympus. I'll do something tighter, do something further away. We'll take those shots right now. All right, so we just shot with the 75 millimeter. I had to stand way back way back over here because it's such a long focal length. Probably not advised for close quarters, but if you're outdoors and you have a lot of room, not bad. I'm gonna switch over now to the 45 1.8 and we'll show you those portraits right now. All right, and uh, I'm recording this again because I didn't have the mic fully plugged in, but um, now I'm switching over to the 85 F2 on the Canon and I'll show you those pictures right now and then I'll come back and talk about them in post. Even though I've already taken the pictures because I can't figure out how to work audio. I suck. Okay, here's the pictures. All right, so we're back, uh, back on the Olympus here recording. I just looked at the footage and the gist of it this is this, it all works, they're all good. Um, the tonality and detail is acceptable in all of them, which is interesting because the EM1 system setup is a lot cheaper, lighter, smaller for sure than the Canon setup. Even that's like the Canon, our cheapest can of full frame, full frame setup you can get into. Um, I thought the 75 millimeter, the compression or the background is a lot closer. You can kind of tell you have to back way up for that lens, but it is very, very sharp and a lot of detail there. Um, I thought the, the full frame sensor maybe had a little bit more tonality, color detail, but I didn't work on these in post. So, uh, you know, I, hard to tell. I'd have to kind of look at both of those in post and see what, what the differences are. It's just, you know, I, I think I think both are acceptable. So if you're a micro four-thirds shooter, rest assured, like, it's good enough. Um, 
if you're a full frame shooter, like yeah, it's it's fine as well. I I think one of the, some of the differences are is that this EM1 Mark III has a pro body, faster shutter speeds. It just feels more premium. The Canon R8 feels like kind of an entry level full frame camera. That matters for sure. Um, the autofocus is more, I guess, uh, inspires more confidence on the Canon for sure. But they both do it, so I don't know. I think the other thing too you kind of see is that. In some instances, you want that shallow depth of field to create separation, but sometimes the depth of field can be too much. I almost think I would stop down the cannon a little bit to 2.8 maybe. Um, and, and then, and, you know, kind of just bring more of the face into focus. The other thing playing to the advantage here is that the background was kind of far away in this test. And so if you were in a tighter scenario, maybe the advantage of full frame would show up there. But man, a lot closer than I thought. And so, uh, yeah, surprising. If you're interested, like how much am I giving up on shooting like a normal 45 1.8? micro four thirds lens versus a full frame 85 f2 or f1.8 lens there it is that's the difference and then of course you get the 75 millimeter in there to kind of show what a bokum beast portrait monster can do on full frame as well so thanks guys thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one appreciate it i'll see you bye